How can there be a good God in a world where bad things happen? This week, I've been trying to speak directly to those of you who aren't so sure about God or religion, about Christianity or the faith that Christians like me hold. If God knows everything, if God can do anything, if God loves us so much, then why does stuff like this happen? Why do people get infected? Why do they die? Why do we hurt? Well, this week, we're exploring four answers. That without painful situations, we would use God, lose God, confuse God, and reduce God. And today, I want to talk about that first one. If bad things didn't happen in your life or mine, we might use God. If that's one of your struggles, uh, I want to tell you a story today from the Bible. And it's an old story, and I'll admit it's kind of a weird story. But it's a famous story because it's a powerful story. It's about a guy named Job. Ever heard his name before? Job, thousands and thousands of years ago, had a really good life. When I was growing up, my dad would always say, you got it made in the shade. (laughs) Did did your dad say that to you too? You don't know how good, you got it, my dad would say. And my dad would say that to Job too. Uh, Job was a successful man. He was a rich man. He had a great marriage, he had lots of children who loved him, and he loved God. The scripture says that he prayed to God, talked to God, sacrificed to God, he worshipped God. But then one day, someone posed a question. In fact, it was more of an accusation. What if this Job is just using God? What if all this praise and sacrifice and God is so great, what if Job lifts up his hands, not because he loves God, but because he wants to get something from God? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Well, sure, Job would offer a sacrifice, say a prayer, do the worship thing. If God gave him this big family, this amazing life, good health, wealth, respect, business thriving, sure, I'll worship. But how would you know if he just wasn't using God? It's an interesting question because I I bet already in your life you have met someone who's been really good to you because they were just using you. You know, it's the guy out at the bar who seems so nice. He compliments, he's sweet, he he buys you a drink because he loves you? Probably not. Maybe he just wants something from you. Maybe he's using you. Or you walk through the mall or through the car sales lot and someone comes up to you and they're so friendly and they're so kind and they're so complimentary and they say all the right things because they're such encouraging people with such great integrity. Well, some of them. But others, they're just thinking about the sale, the commission, the, the bottom line. They're just just using you. And sadly, sometimes this happens with Christian people. You have the neighbor who goes to church every Sunday morning and they're really nice to you when they talk over the fence until they find out that you have questions and doubts, that you don't believe all that stuff just yet and then maybe they're not so friendly and they're not so kind because you don't share their faith. That Their love wasn't genuine. They were just using you. So what's the only way you can know if someone's not using you? That they actually love you? Here's the answer. Pain. When someone isn't getting something out of the relationship and yet they still stick around and they still love and they still encourage and they're still kind, even if it costs them, then you know it's real. And that's what happened with Job. The accusation was made, Job doesn't love God, he's using God. And so God said, fine. And he let pain come into Job's life. His health, his wealth disappeared, his family, his business, his reputation, he lost everything. But what did Job do? His own wife proved that in a way she was using God. You should curse him after all of this. But here's what Job said, you foolish woman, shall we accept good from God? and not trouble? The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. 
that just might be the reason why God is letting this happen. There are lots of people who live healthy, wealthy, first world lives. We live in the suburbs with our two-car garage, our nice homes, our 2,000 square feet. We have money in the bank, investments, and we go to church and we pray before our meals. But we'll never know if that faith is genuine until we pray in the midst of pain. We'll never realize that we actually love God and not just the good things that God gives until we suffer like Job. And so if you hate religious fakes, hypocrites who just say the right things because they're in it for themselves, then actually you shouldn't be afraid of pain. You should actually appreciate God for allowing it. It's what reveals the truth. And that's exactly why we know that Jesus loves us. If Jesus just came in the world to be praised and prayed to, we wouldn't know if he was just using us for that praise. But when it cost him pain, when he ended up on a cross, when everyone turned their backs on him, when, when they spit in his face and put a crown of thorns on his head, but he didn't zip up back to heaven and say, fine. When he went through it, when he stayed, when he suffered, then you know it's real. So pain is not the problem. It's not the reason to reject God. He has a good purpose for it. In fact, it reminds us of the greatest purpose that he ever carried out for us, for our forgiveness. I pray that helps you believe in my God, a great, loving, powerful, all-knowing God who cares more than you'll ever understand. Thanks for watching and I can't wait to see you tomorrow. If today's message made you curious about what Christians believe and why they hold on to a good God in such a broken world, I want to encourage you today to reach out to a Christian that you know. A family member, a friend, or a neighbor. I'm sure they'd love to talk, so I pray today that you have the courage to do so. And if you already are a Christian, who are you thinking about during today's message? Can you pray for them today? Maybe reach out and share this message? I love this deep and difficult discussion to get to more hearts that we could consider the goodness and love of God. Thanks for taking the next step and we'll talk to you tomorrow. If these messages are a blessing to you and your faith and you want more, we'd love to make it easy for you. You can just click this button right here to get connection to a YouTube subscription or if you want these devotions right into your inbox, you can click right here. YouTube here, email here. Email here, YouTube there. Click both these buttons. We'll give you as much of Jesus as we can because we know that Jesus is all that we need.